and welcome to Encore. Today's show is dedicated to a king who ruled over 3,000 years ago. Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great, was the most celebrated pharaoh of the Egyptian empire. And a traveling exhibition centered around him, Ramses and the Gold of the Pharaohs, has arrived in Paris. It comes just several years after a show dedicated to Ramses' predecessor, Tutankhamun, which drew nearly one and a half million visitors back in 2019. Our culture editor, Eve Jackson went to the opening of the new blockbuster exhibition at La Villette. Behold Ramses the Great, ancient Egypt's most powerful king. His reign stretched far and wide and lasted nearly 70 years, beginning in the 17th century BC. 3,000 years on, his legacy still looms large, and the artifacts associated with his reign are considered some of Egypt's most treasured heritage. Many of the objects in this exhibition have never been seen outside of Egypt. Welcome to what is being billed as Paris's Exhibition of the Year. Ramses, he was a great builder, he was a great warrior, it was a time where he conquered a lot of territory. And the most fascinating part is he lived till he was 87 in a time where the average age was probably 35 to 40. So he became the pharaoh of generations. He also ended up having the largest tomb in the Valley of the Kings. The artifacts on display include jewelry, royal masks, and golden treasure from the pharaoh's tomb. But the centerpiece of this exhibition is this, Ramses' coffin, exceptionally loaned to Paris. It was first discovered in 1881. From a historical point of view, this piece is priceless, part of the sarcophagus of Ramses II that protected the mummy of the king for 2,900 years. The coffin is made of Lebanon cedar. It was painted with the representation of the nemesis, the striped headcloth. The aureus, the royal cobra on the forefront, and the scepters that are held in his hands with arms crossed. Ramses' mummy is far too fragile to travel, but if you'd like a glimpse of a mummy, how about these animal mummies that were recently discovered in the ancient city of Memphis? A mongoose, a lion cub, and some cats are on display for the first time ever. The exhibition is more than just a set of beautiful objects. Using virtual reality and multimedia, it brings to life the most important events and places of Ramses' rule. With headphones and VR goggles, visitors follow his first wife, Nefertari, on a tour of her husband's most impressive monuments, Abu Simbel and Nefertari's tomb. The temple and crypt appear like they would have at the time of their construction, immensely detailed and convincingly real. For many, this exhibition is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The exhibition was already shown in the United States and will continue on to Australia, but King Ramsay's coffin is only being displayed here in Paris, a gesture of recognition from Egyptian to French authorities for their work nearly 50 years ago. In the 1970s, a group of French scientists save Ramsay's mummy from being eaten up by a fungus. Inka Oyatade has the details. King Ramses II's sarcophagus lands on French soil for the first time in half a century. It's the artifact's second visit to Paris in a rare loan of the relic outside Egypt. Transported under police escort, the ancient monarch receives a welcome fit for a modern day king. It was a similar story during the Pharaoh's first visit in 1976, when he was received with the pomp and pageantry of a state visit. Un détachement de la garde républicaine a rendu les honneurs à la dépouille royale. In 1976, France did not only welcome Ramses II's coffin, but his corpse too. The mummy was being ravaged by fungus and a group of nuclear engineers from Grenoble were tasked with saving it. This using innovative techniques at the time. Christian de Tassini, the young scientist who supervised the team, still remembers the tense operation that lasted 12 hours. 
I slept next to the radiator. I brought my sleeping bag because I was paying close attention to everything that could happen. Their hard work paid off and Ramses II was repatriated to Cairo the next day. Now Egypt is loaning the mummy's sarcophagus to Paris, a gesture to thank France for making the pharaoh eternal once again. Well, my colleague Liana Sally from our Arabic channel has been speaking with the renowned archaeologist and Egypt's former antiquities minister, Zahi Hawass. He told her more about Ramses the Great and the fight to repatriate Egypt's ancient artifacts. Ramses II uh, was always uh, regarded as the greatest and he's been always celebrated. Why is that? Because this, uh, there is no king in ancient Egypt made a great achievement more than Ramses II. He was a great builder. In every place in, in modern Egypt, there is a temple or a chapel or a statue of this king. In my career as an archaeologist, I discovered a double statue of Ramses to the south of the Great Pyramid of Minkawra and another great temple in Heliopolis. The second, he was a great warrior, a great strong king. He, he had to fight the Hittites. He was a peacemaker. He was a family man. He was married eight wives. The best of them that he was in love with was Queen Nefertari, and he had 100 children. This is the only known king. If you mention ancient Egypt to a child, he will tell you Tutankhamun and Ramses II. And your opinion, what makes this exhibition so unique? It's unique because it's about this great king. It's unique because you have in the capital of Ramses II, Per Ramesso in the Delta, you have the city of Tennis, about six kilometers away. Most of Ramses' objects were moved from the capital, from his capital to Tennis. And that's why we brought also, with this great exhibit, we brought also the gold of Tennis, animal mummies. But in my opinion, when I go to this exhibit, the best, in my opinion, is the outer coffin of Sinejim. Sinejim was a great artist who really made these beautiful monuments. And also the statue of Ramses as a, a young man. And also many small objects, the obelisk. I am fascinated by this small obelisk. Then each object in this exhibit will capture the heart of any French who will come to visit. You've been always uh, a fighter to return uh, the Egyptian ancient uh, artifacts, uh, including, of course, the famous uh, uh, Rosetta Stone from the British Museum and uh, the uh, Dendera Zodiac from the Louvre, uh, Paris. Are you still optimistic that these ancient objects will come back soon to I'm Egypt? I'm always optimistic, and I never stop fight. I brought back 6,000 artifacts, but I believe only, I'm not after all the thousands of artifacts in the Louvre. I'm only after three unique artifacts. Their home should be Egypt, not outside. The bust of Nefertiti in Berlin, the Rosetta Stone in the British Museum, the Zodiac at the Louvre. Can you believe? Can you feel free and you feel happy when you see a replica in a temple and taken by uh, a, a French, give it to the Louvre, and you have the original in the Louvre, I hope that the French people can support our cause and return the Zodiac back to Egypt. And we have a petition. It's signed until now by many foreigners and many Egyptians. 250,000 signed it. I'm hoping until we can reach a million. And after that, through the popular people, I will be able to to send a letter to the Louvre and others to ask for the return of Nefertiti, the Zodiac, and Rosetta Stone. What are the latest discoveries uh, that have been revealed? And till when there will be new secrets, actually, to be unveiled oh, in soon. Egypt? We are working right now to see what's under the corridor that's found behind the main entrance of the pyramid. I'm searching now for the mummy of Queen Nefertiti through DNA and her daughter, Anche Esin Amun. We are working with DNA to find out if Tut Anche Amun had an infection or not. If had an infection, we'll announce that he died in an accident. I'm searching the Valley of the Kings for the tomb of Queen Nefertiti and her daughter, Anche Esin Amun. And we think there is one area near the tomb of Amun Hotub III, the godfather of the Amarna family. We are hoping 
that the value of the kings will reveal another secret like Tutankhamun Amun to us. Um, last question. The Grand Egyptian Museum has been long awaited. Um, when it will be open to the, the public? The Minister of Antiquities did announce today that soon will announce that the museum will open after six months from now. I'm very proud that myself and Farouk Hosni are the ones who started the construction of this museum in 2002. I was planning to open it in 2015, but because of the trouble that we had in Egypt, we cannot do it. But this museum is a very good, important indication to the world that Egypt is really caring of their monuments, building the most beautiful and the largest museum in the world. As we await the opening of Cairo's Grand Egyptian Museum, we can end with another exhibition of Egyptian artifacts here in Europe. The Art and History Museum of Brussels is currently showing more than 200 objects from its Egyptian collection, some of them for the very first time, in a show titled Expedition Egypt. The artifacts are interspersed with work from Egyptian artist Sarah Salam, exploring contemporary Egyptian identity and questioning the history and meaning of Egyptology. We'll leave you with images from that show. Thank you for watching. For more culture news, you can always head to our website or find us on social media. And there is more news coming up on France 24 just after this.